Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with something more on the lines of a theme than rather a specific ghost subject. Like in other words, a specific ghost case or something like that. I'm surprised I haven't talked about this before. I had to double check to see just in case, but no, here it is with regards to this new video. And what I'm talking about is this theme involving animal ghosts. So instead of, let's say, ghosts of people or maybe places that are haunted, no, in this case, this is absolutely having to do with ghosts involving animals. So cats, dogs, horses, stuff like that. Apparently, the afterlife still has places for animals that we love like in other words our family pets or any other type of pets that are just around our situation who knew that there's that type of world but there is so in this particular video i'm going to go ahead and talk about the this theme and then try to see if we could help discern what essentially causes these animal hauntings and how they're different from other hauntings as well so let's go ahead and let's talk about animal ghosts here and then those of you that have more of a local experience like let's say encounters with these animal ghosts let me know please post them in the comments below now for starters i want to say I have talked in a loose way about other type of animal ghosts, but those are on the lines of, let's say, those haunted evil entities, like let's say the uh, black dogs or some of the other entities that I've talked about that tend to have animal shapes, but they're not pets, like they're not the ones that I'm referring to here. Now, in this case, the animal ghosts themselves are more on the lines of household animals, the kinds that, again, you and I happen to love that have in our household or know people around as well. That's the kind of stuff that I'm referring to here. What's interesting is this. It turns out that most other ghostly encounters, like there's plenty that I've chronicled here on my playlist, such ghosts occur due to tragedies, like let's say some kind of bad thing that happened in a war or something violent that happened to someone, or it could have been even be something on the lines of a crash or someone taking their own life, that kind of stuff. Here though, animal ghosts apparently become ghosts more for benevolent reasons, meaning they in turn haunt their locations because they want to feel still a connection with either that location or their previous owner. Like in other words, their life when they were living was had so much good stuff, like so much love, so much happiness for them that after death, after they leave, they decide not to fade away. They in turn stick around and either basically haunt that location, just moving about as if they were still alive or in other situations, they're more on the lines of protectors because it turns out this, some animals even protect their owners or that location itself for the rest of their afterlife. In fact, I was reading information associated with certain animal ghosts, especially dogs, acting as in protectors against intruders. Like there are stories of a potential a home intruder, like somebody trying to have a robbery done or something really bad associated with the people living there. And there will be reports of phantom barks from, from dogs that were there before that are still there to this day, obviously, as animal ghosts. But they're not having it when it comes to anyone trying to do any harm to their owner that's still there or someone new that's there as well. Or in other cases, they're along the lines of just of, of, of animals that just want to stay there. Like, for example, cats. Certain cats have been noted to just wander around the location, giving emotional kisses and cuddles, if you call those the, to some of the people that are there. Like, in other words, people will hear them purring in certain locations, or they'll see them almost or feel them walking around. Instead of, let's say, it being like a soft bundle of fur that's caressing someone's legs and so on, um, it's going to be more of a colder sensation because ghosts, and I, um, it's interesting too about how ghosts, when people feel like human ghosts, how they're actually cold as well, but animals are the same thing too. The way they cuddle, they move, the way they move about, it'll be a cold feeling too, but it'll again be one more of a benevolent stance. So again, either you have guardian angel type protectors or you have others that are just there 
to continue offer support or the type of affection. And those are the two almost very, very nice benevolent guidelines that these animal ghosts tend to go for. There's nothing else in terms of other items. Like let's say if these animals are coming back to life or coming in the afterlife as bad beings, like in other words, creating havoc and just uh, terrorizing any of the owners, no real experience is associated with that. That's the neat difference, right? When it comes to animals and humans, even as ghosts, some human ghosts, will still be there just creating such fear and terror for everyone around them. But animals, no, even after they die and they come back as ghosts, they're still there. But some of them, or most of them, are basically just nice. Like there's no indications of anyone, any one of those um, animal ghosts causing the same type of terrors that uh, humans would. And then there's others that I mentioned before as well. Get this, there's apparently animal ghosts involving horses, sheep, cow, fishes. I didn't even know fishes have that option. Someone please let me know how that works. Like, is it something where you see the fish swimming around either an invisible bowl or something like that? Or are they within the actual bowl itself? And then even rodent spirits have been reported as well. Imagine how much uh, pe that would frighten certain people as well. Little, like seeing a, a real life rat as opposed to a ghost rat, like how much other levels that would be there. Now, as far as how much these hauntings last, that's an interesting question when it comes to that, because there's two ways that it goes about. Some of them, apparently these ghost animals last as long as they feel that they are needed. So some of them are there with the owners while the owners are still living in that location, wherever that home or apartment is. And then they stay on afterward like they'll stay on even after the owner moves they just like the location and they still stay there that's why apparently some people that move to certain homes will encounter mysterious noises cold spots almost like an energy that makes it seem like there's something there like a domesticated dog or domesticated cat but it's still around that location but obviously there are none it's just a ghost animal that's one indication and then others are where it's more on the lines of either just a few days or a few weeks and then somehow some way these animal pets these animal ghosts just decide to move on like they'll just run about and then go on wherever it is in their afterlife where they go and then they're longer no longer there in that location but pretty interesting stuff no when you think about it this is not something that normally comes to mind when it comes to ghosts and spirits you always think of it being a ghost like human like a man or a woman but in this case something involving animal ghosts they really, really are there. One last thing to mention, too, about these. Um, you can try to apparently communicate with these animal ghosts. If so, maybe you might even have a medium. I was reading how it's some mediums actually help or communicate with animals, too. And if that's the case, maybe that'll help things out better with the situation. And so um, anyone, again, that has a local level, local report of that, maybe something occurred and you do have animal ghosts in your location. I'd love to hear what those thoughts are, too. It's, it's fascinating to me because the more you think about it, the more the onion is peeled. Like you wonder, how is it that other animal ghosts aren't around? Like, in other words, like all those animals that get shot during hunting season, what happened to them, right? How come they don't become ghosts? Or animals that get slaughtered, let's say for cows or anything involving um, pigs and so on, how come they don't become ghosts as well? And then anything else involving why certain cats and dogs do become animal ghosts and others do not. Obviously, there's more. I think I read an indication somewhere that there's more cats in the United States than there are humans. So I mean, it makes me wonder like why there's not more ghosts, like in terms of cats wandering around everywhere, especially considering how long they live and, you know, how a good majority of them have homes and so on. It's, again, fascinating stuff and it makes you want to get more information on it. But let me know what you guys think. Animal ghosts, you think that's something you've encountered? Do you want to encounter that? Please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.